extension report. Extension reports live for Survival 82 Part 1, Record 1, little doubt that in the general election of 1980, voters selected those candidates who promised less government interference in their lives, a balanced federal budget, and less taxes to pay. Those who were elected are trying to deliver on those promises, but are encountering difficulties. Prior to the summer recess of 1981, Congress reduced the fiscal year 1982 federal budget by more than $35 billion. In mid-December, another 4% cut was made on budget levels that had just been established on October 1, 1981. A special commission has been established to study ways to reduce the number of rules and regulations controlling behavior in the marketplace. President Reagan has also proposed that the new departments of education and energy be phased out. Along with these cuts, spending on national defense has increased. Congress also passed in December the largest peacetime defense budget in our history, more than $200 billion. An across-the-board cut in federal income taxes was also passed, with provisions to reduce taxes for businesses. As we start the year 1982, what effect have these actions had on our economy? The national rate of unemployment hit a six-year high of 8.4 percent in October 1981 and is projected to rise even higher during the first quarter of 1982. In Iowa, the unemployment rate for October 1981 hit a high of 6.1 percent, up from 5.4 percent one year ago. Interest rates, although on their way down, are still at historically high rates. The prime rate has dropped from a high of 20.5 percent at the start of 1981 to around 15 percent today. More Mortgage rates started out at about 15% at the beginning of the year and were about 18% in December. Iowa mortgage rates were running about 1% under the national average. If you want to buy an auto on the installment plan, it's going to cost about 17% to finance it. These high interest rates have had a devastating effect on two major sectors of the economy, the automobile industry and the construction industry. This is reflected in heavy losses for the domestic auto producers in 1981. For workers in these industries, the impact is also grim. Unemployment in the construction industry has hit the highest level since 1975 at 18.2% of the workforce. It now stands at 27% of the hourly workforce in the auto industry. The last federal budget surplus occurred in fiscal year 1969, and deficits since then have varied from $2.8 billion in fiscal year 1970 to $66.4 billion in fiscal year 1976. Estimates of the deficit for the current fiscal year are over $100 billion, with even higher deficits projected for FY 1983 and 84. With a federal debt already over one trillion dollars and the annual interest on that debt exceeding 100 billion dollars it is causing policymakers some concern a bumper farm crop along with high interest rates has also depressed farm income it is estimated that for 1981 farm income will be down substantially both nationally and in Iowa the rate of inflation for 1981 at approximately 8 percent was considerably lower than the double digit rate of 12.5 percent for 1980 However, this has been accomplished at a very high cost. The rise in unemployment, business failures, loss of business profits, and increases in the number of individuals seeking somewhat scarcer welfare benefits. 
An across-the-board tax cut is in place as of October 1, 1981. A reduction of more than $700 billion is scheduled over the next six years. This is part of the reason for the increased budget red ink over the next few years, along with the increase in defense spending. These cuts are designed to stimulate spending by increasing income, but layoffs, reduced work weeks, and lower profits have dampened spending. The January 1, 1982 increase in the Social Security contribution rate and maximum wage base will take an additional $4 billion a year out of the income of workers, decreasing spendable income even further. For Iowa, the federal tax cut means more income from the state income tax, since more income will be available to tax. Government spending has increased dramatically over the last 80 years, but so has the growth in the overall economy, going from less than $100 billion to more than $3 trillion in a little more than 50 years. Most of the growth in federal spending can be traced to expenditures on wars, national defense, and defense-related activities. In recent years, more emphasis has been placed on providing more goods and services in the human resources area, the war on poverty being a prime example. Federal outlays for human resources have risen from 27.7% of the federal budget in 1960 to a high of 54% in 1976 and about 51.5% estimated for 1982. Since these outlays are so large, they are the prime targets for budget cuts. Many budget dollars go directly to individuals as benefit payments. These payments are in entitlement programs such as pensions and retirement pay. If the budget is cut, this means less in benefit payments. Congress and the president are receiving strong protests regarding cuts in these areas. In Iowa, the budget cuts mean less federal money for ADC, food stamps, school lunches, Title 20 programs, Medicaid, and many other programs. State government and the legislature face the unpleasant task of deciding whether to raise taxes to replace reduced federal revenues or to cut benefits and services to the people of Iowa. Iowa now raises over $1.5 billion from its tax base for the state general fund. Most of this comes from an income tax and sales tax. The state ranks a little below average in the total tax collections when compared to other states. Decision not to raise taxes may place the burden on counties to get revenue from the only source they now have available, the property tax. The overall prospects from cutting the budget in the human resources area and raising defense spending are not pleasant. If the economy continues to sink deeper into recession, with higher rates of unemployment and the public sector responds with less help to the needy, it doesn't take much imagination to look ahead and see the civil unrest of the 1960s repeated. Welcome to Life Force. I'm Betty Lou Varnum, and we're going to depart from our usual format in this program by having a panel questioned by an audience which indeed has been affected by the federal budget cuts. Our panel members are Russell Pounds, Extension Economist at Iowa State University, Jerry Rankin, Director of the Iowa Legislative Fiscal Bureau, Shian Shirzan, Director of the Iowa Council for Children and Families, and William Stuckey, Chair of the Story County Board of Supervisors. Welcome. Now, let's go to our first question from the audience, and would you please identify yourself before asking your question? I am Glenn Holmes, Chairman of the uh, Ames Area Coordinating Committee for Senior Citizens. And I'm here representing senior citizens. Uh, and uh, one of the questions that I would like to ask is when we will know exactly where we stand with regard to aid such as federal aid. Aging is inevitable and there are a lot of people in the proportion of aging people becoming larger uh, every day. And when will we know so that we can build our programs and I'm speaking about programs to fit a budget that is somewhat uh, secure in, in our own thinking. That's a very serious problem for the senior citizens. And we have members of the panel who can address that question. Do you want to volunteer <laughs> or shall we designate one? Well, I can uh, probably answer it. First, I want to correct, I'm not, uh, as of three weeks ago, I'm not chairman of the Board of Supervisors like Don Nelson is. Oh. But uh, you will know at the latest, uh, Mr. Holmes, uh, by March 15th. Uh, presumably by that time, the slate, state legislature will have uh, passed their budget, and that is the time in which the county budget must be finalized. I, I would just like to add to that, Bill. The, the budget for fiscal year 82 is already in place, Glenn, so anything you have coming from federal 
monies, except you don't know how the federal revenue sharing is going to be distributed yet, is, is already on the docket. So it, you know, it's up to the local entities of government to let you know, uh, you know how you're going to fare. But for future years, that's, you know, maybe if we had listened to the president's uh, press conference on January the 19th, we may have had some answers to that. Good enough. Do you have a follow-up question? Well, I, yeah, except that in many cases, the uh, human services people are very much uh, looking toward revenue sharing. And that is the one point that we would like to know are there any funds that are going to be available through revenue sharing? And if so, what, per, what percentage of decrease is there in the budget? Well, I, I, I'm afraid that uh, at least I can't answer that question because, you know, the City Council and the Board of Supervisors are the ones who make that decision for your area, so uh, well, we, we, we can't, I'll, I'll just have to uh, pass on that question. And I think we have to go back to Mr. <laughs> Stuckey on that. Do you have anything further in amplifying? Well, this is what will continue to happen. Everything will be diverted to the Board of County Supervisors, I suppose. Well, the f revenue sharing for available for the county in fiscal year 80 was 463,000. For fiscal year 81, it was reduced to 424,000. And we're projecting for fiscal year 82 of 374,000. So those numbers are reducing, and I would probably forecast that the likelihood of those being made up by uh, state and local taxation as being practically nil. Thank you. We'll go to our next question. Okay, my name is Jim Thomas. I'm from the Advocator Welfare Answering Service in Waterloo, Iowa. And uh, my concern is financial assistance programs, mainly the ADC program and Medicaid. And uh, my question is, as a matter of public policy, the, the drastic reductions that have taken place um, under Ronald Reagan's program and the federal cut, cuts in ADC since October, which you know, we're talking about 40,000 Iowa, Iowans uh, being affected by these cuts, what does it mean in the future as a matter of public policy? and the quality of life for Iowans. Do you understand? Shan? It's been my understanding to date that um, because of the effects of some of those cuts, specifically the ones that, that seem to be having the greatest effect on families and children, as you said, Jim, are um, Medicaid and ADC, that Many times when people, for instance, look at a program generally, it's, it's easy to say there's a lot of abuse. You know, we really can cut that program, and it's difficult sometimes for people to see how that really is going to affect individual children and families. Um, unfortunately, we're just beginning to see some of the effects of these cuts, and, and the only thing I can really say in answer to your question is some people who in the past may have not been aware or been willing to look at the effects of those cuts are seeing them in situations. For instance, um, I recently heard of a situation where a woman, because of the cuts, was no longer eligible for child care for her children. She did not wish to go on ADC, so she took a job in the evening. She had been eligible for daycare in the evening, but this is no longer um, available for her. Uh, she was leaving her children at home alone. She could not find child care. And the two children started a fire. Now, luckily, they were not hurt. But these are the kind of things, plus the general stress that families are under more and more that I think we're seeing. Hopefully, all those are, those are having negative effects on those families. It can maybe raise awareness of some people of the value of some of those services for the future. I would hope that would be one of the effects. Mr. Rankin, do you have a comment on that area? Yes, I, uh, I think that, uh, that there is going to be some some major shifts in source of funding for EDC in Title 19. The governor's budget speaks to that uh, dramatically, and we'll uh, have to see yet how the how the legislature is going to to uh, to respond to that. I talked with a staffer in Washington this morning, and there was an article in the paper uh, this morning, both the Wall Street Journal and the uh, Washington Post, that the president will probably propose that. Uh, 
that the federal government take over Title 19 completely and that uh, ADC will be shifted entirely to the state, uh, ADC along with some educational programs. Uh, one thing I think is very clear from the federal level, uh, uh, ADC Title 19 is not going to be a national priority and it's going to be up to the state and local governments to operate those programs. What about the what about the effects o over a longer range just on public policy though? And I guess I'm talking about things like routine medical care. You can go back 10 years and when they had Head Start um, and there weren't as many nutrition programs and medical programs, they had children coming in there without teeth or their teeth were were already rotted and blood diseases, etc. where most of those things have been alleviated. And with the cutback in these services now, what do you see for the future as far as going back to those type of things? It seems like they're not as important now because they don't exist. And what will happen in the future? Dr. Pound? Just it, a guess, obviously. Well, it's, uh, it would just be an educated guess, but certainly we're going to have to take a look at our our structure of financing public services and there, there, if this funding uh, continues the way it has, the cuts in funding, uh, it's going to have to be up to the legislatures and the, the local governments to determine whether they are going to take up the slack. That's up to the people in the state of Iowa to, to give their, their feelings to the people who make these decisions. Thank you. Well, there's one problem with that. Uh, there is a definite policy shift of uh, moving the funding of these kind of programs from a very broad-based tax, the federal income tax, which falls upon all the people, to either the local state income tax or uh, sales tax or the county property tax, which is a very narrow-based tax. And so that policy shift has been taking place. Now, whether that makes an equitable distribution or not is uh, under question. Furthermore, that policy shift assumes that the scale of the problem is uh, overlays exactly the scale of the resources to deal with it. And it doesn't take into account what changes in technology do to, to shift the location of economic activity and so forth. So it places a very unfair burden on some localities as against other localities. And I think we really haven't debated that issue at all. Well, we'll probably be debating it to a greater extent, and we'll be doing that as we continue. At this point, we are going to take a short break. Life Force continues with more after this. Welcome back to Life Force. I'm Betty Lou Varnum, and we are continuing our discussion on the effect of the budget cuts on Iowans. Our panel members are Russell Pounds, Extension Economist at Iowa State University, Jerry Rankin, Director of the Iowa Legislative Fiscal Bureau, Shian Shirzan, Director of the Iowa Council for Children and Families, and William Stuckey, member of the Story County Board of Supervisors. Now, we have another question. Yes, my name is Kathy Morgan. I'm Food Service Director for Ames Community School District. I think the major part of President Reagan's upcoming uh, budget address to the nation will concern his turn back plan where he plans to turn back to the state some fiscal and some regulatory responsibility for social programs. Do any of you have any outlook as to whether child nutrition programs will be affected by this? And do you think the overall concept of this plan is good or bad? Sheehan? Did you want to take it first, Jerry? The, the child nutrition uh, program is, in, is included in Title 20 funds, I believe. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, and in, the, uh, in, a, in a program handled by the health department. But uh, those those funds have been reduced in the block grants that uh, will be appropriated by the General Assembly this session for 82-83. And uh, there has been some reduction, a 20 to 25 percent reduction in those funds. In state funds? No, in federal, federal funding. funds. D does this mean that uh, children's lunch programs will increase in cost next year? <coughs> I mean, the cost to the parents. I can't speak to that specifically. I, I believe it will have some effects in terms of, of um, the number of children that may have access to the lunches as we've known them in the past. 
And not only are we talking about um, decreases that may affect children who are in the school systems, but there's also a separate program that provides nutritious meals to children who are in child care centers and family daycare homes who meet the eligibility requirements. Those children will also most likely be affected. Another uh, unfortunate part about it is that in, in forecasting this shift, you were asking the policy question whether it's good or bad, was that uh, we estimated the worst case would be if the federal government reduced the amount that they transferred to the state and also included with it all of their former regulations. That was the worst case, and that's what we got. Uh, the promise was that there would be relieved of the regulations, but that has not happened. Our next question. Hi, my name is Jerry Sullivan. I'm the director of financial aids at Iowa State University. And I was reading this morning that 40% of the students that dropped out of Iowa State University last year did so for financial reasons. And considering that one-third of the funds that would go for student financial assistance next year have been shifted to defense and there are plans for an additional one-third of student aid funds to be shifted the next year to defense. I'm wondering if any of you would care to comment upon the cost-benefit impact that you would see resulting from the decrease in financial aid spending versus the increase that is bound to come about from unemployment spending and also what impact you think this might have upon our democracy uh, when we reach a, a point where only those from upper middle income levels and above can attend higher education. Uh, I think that that decrease in funding is going to affect the private colleges a lot more than it will Iowa State. The private colleges currently get about 20 percent of the student enrollment and uh, the, the other, that percentage will probably decrease uh, I think there's a lot more students going to have to work while they go to college, as, as many of us did, and they'll have a lot less chance to get into a lot of the vices that they currently, that they currently uh, partake in uh, uh, when they could be working their way partly through college, at least. But it's going to hurt the private universities and colleges in Iowa a lot more than it is Iowa State or the, uh, or the University of Iowa. Dr. Pounds, would you agree with that? Well, I... I agree with it to a certain extent, but I, uh, to answer Jerry's question about, you know, what does this do to our democracy, I think it's unfortunate that we have this system whereby only the well-to-do can go to college, and I see us going back to that somewhat, and I think that is unfortunate. Well, I'd like to answer the question also and, s and say that that shift uh, in policy is bad news for the American society. Uh, Professor Schultz of the University of Chicago got a Nobel Prize for showing us that of all the investments that the society makes, it gets the highest return for each dollar invested in education. Okay, if we return that, that has a very negative effect upon the economy. Furthermore, that shift in investment to the war industries is producing goods that are, uh, that are consumption goods. In other words, they produce no new wealth in the society as compared to investments in the private sector that produce production uh, tools. So it has a very negative effect upon the economy. Our next questioner, please. I'm Tony Nertuso, a member of the Ames School Board, and Bill's answer leads right into my question, I think. And that is, as the state attempts to move into filling part of the void left by the reduction in federal funding, Will it mean that a larger and larger proportion of the state's budget is taken from education and moved to other services? And if, it, if that does happen, what do you perceive will happen to the quality of education in this state as we know it today? 51% uh, of the state budget currently goes to education. Uh, of the almost $2 billion state budget, about 600 and 40 or 50 million goes to the K-12, to the, to the elementary schools. Uh, the legislature has uh, increased funding in the last 15 years from $30 million to 640 to $50 million from the state level. Uh, therefore allowing property taxes to increase only slightly as far as school funding is concerned. 
the legislature is going to have to decide on priorities. Uh, they will have to decide on how many of the social programs formerly funded by the federal government are going to be picked up, how much of our resources will go to education. Uh, the elementary schools, the K-12 schools, are going to have to get their house in order as far as school teacher salaries, which are really inadequate, in my view, at the present time. Pay them like clerks and expect professional people. At the same time, uh, the teaching profession is going to have to go along with a merit system of some sort. Our next question, please. I'm Virginia Peterson, and I work for the Iowa Interchurch Consortium for Governmental Concerns. I've uh, followed with interest some of the budget cuts and have noticed that not very many papers have picked up on there will be on the fact that there will be 11 million dollars less coming to the state in the form of Social Security grants for survivors benefits for those people who are still in college and I wonder if the colleges and universities in this state have done any kind of a study about how that's going to impact them and um, how many more people are going to be in the job market and how it's going to how it's going to impact the cities that happen to have a university in their, their uh, community we have time for rather a short answer I think it goes back to the response we made to the other question there's no question in my mind that it's going to mean less young men and women being able to go to college and if investment in education is a good investment and I certainly believe it is we're, we're going to be hurting from that respect and we have just about run out of time and I would like very much to thank all of the members of our panel I'd like to thank the members of our audience and I'd like to thank you for joining us and for participating in this life force program the program has been on Survival 82, and I'm Betty Lou Varnum, speaking for Life Force. Good night.